Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and today we're going to discuss adding brightness to PV3D light source. So let me just tell you where to get all this information before we get going. Just go to my blog, professionalpapervision.wordpress, and this is where this is found. Now, if you know anything about Paper Vision's light source, it's very dumb. It only has one property, and that's position, X, Y, and Z. But that's important because basically the X, Y, and Z vector of the light source with respect to the normal plane of the polygon or triangle that you're looking at will give you an angle. And as that angle gets larger, basically your, your polygon surface is rotating away from the light and it tells the dot product to attenuate or you darken the pixels. And I cover all of this in great detail in my book. So today we're going to add brightness into that uh, point source. Now, someone who's been instrumental with me that I really need to just acknowledge, and that is Ralph Howard. He really is the creator of Paper Vision 2.0. Uh, I've just had a great blast going through all his different classes. It's like standing on the shoulders of a giant. And I had the opportunity to meet him uh, a number of months ago. I went up to L.A. and got my RMI certificate in Paper Vision 3D. And uh, he's a great guy, and uh, flying 1,500 miles from uh, Kentucky was worth every single cent 100 times. So... Uh, once again, uh, just acknowledge Ralph and all his work he's done. Just going through all his classes is very impressive to see uh, you know, how structured everything is and very nice work. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you an uh, example here of uh, what I mean by lighting. So let's go ahead and brightness. So let's bring this up. So we have a little demo here and we actually have um, five shaders here. We have a, a flat shader, a cell shader, a guru shader, a fong shader, and an environment shader. And we're, we're actually making them light and dark. So what's happening here is we're changing the brightness parameter. This is not possible in paper vision presently. So what we're doing actually now, I have an oscillating sine wave, and I'm just making it dark and light and dark and light, and oscillating back and forth, just changing the brightness value. Important that brightness value has to vary, vary from 0 to 1. If you try to go higher your uh, system or negative, your system will just whack out. So that's the example. Let me show you how easy that was to do. You're going to be impressed, not with what I, how good I am, but how easy it is to do this. I mean, this is really incredible. Okay, let me show you how easy this is to do. I mean, if you want the sun to rise and set on your scene, you've got to have brightness. It's amazing that how easy it is that it's not there already. But all you have to do, let me go down and show you, is open up the display object class and put in a brightness getter setter. Now, if you've ever wondered where the physics should go in paper vision, let me tell you, this really solidified it in my mind. The physics needs to go into the display object 3D class. And all you do is you create a getter, get function and a set function and that's where you set your uh, value of brightness and since your light is a display object it automatically comes into the parameter once you've done that you have to change all the materials now there's five materials as we said earlier there are flat cell grow fong and environment and pretty much you go to the org paper vision 3d materials shaders uh, materials folder open that up open up the flat folder and where you find z angle just multiply it times the brightness factor that's it. That's all there is to it. Now you have brightness for your flat shader. Go to the Garo. A little bit more complicated. You have three factors. So go down wherever P0 is and just multiply your light brightness times 127, 127, 127 for P0, P1, P2. That's it. That's all there is to it. Now this next one looks like I did a huge amount of work, but I really didn't. I just opened up the class and found P0, Q0, P1, Q1, P2, Q2. And this is basically three in one. By changing the environment class, you get the cell, fong, and environment uh, materials fixed. And all you have to do is multiply 2 minus the brightness factor times P0, Q0, Q1, P1, Q1, P2, and Q2. And that's it. Once you've done that, you're ready to go. So just keep in mind your brightness is between 0 and 1. And uh, what I did if when you download the source, you're going to see uh, basically I've changed the name of the shader class. And I do that because I make mistakes. I tack the brightness name on the end of my shader classes. Just so if I make a mistake, I go back to the original one, and I do. And all this took me about 30 minutes. It was amazing. So for people who've wanted brightness and waiting for someone to do it for you, hey, don't wait. The code's right here. Go to source right here and click on it. And that's my uh, Google code, of course. Just download that. And it's all free. Okay, before we go, let me show you the wrapper class that all this goes into. And to see that, you can basically download the source if you'd like above or click the more button. And when you do the entire wrapper class is there. 
And what I'm going to do here, of course, is do those initial imports of the uh, materials that I need. My uh, cell material brightness, environmental brightness, uh, flat shade brightness, garo brightness, and fong material brightness. You can see I added those brightness names because I redid the classes in case I made a mistake I could go back. And the display class, I didn't change it. I just kept it the same and just stuck my uh, extra getter setter in there. And go on down here, we're using the basic view to start it up. I declare my cylinders as private variables. I basically just start adding my materials to the stage right here. And here's my light. And in that is that internal property brightness, which is adjusted uh, just from a property of the light uh, function. And so go on down, and everything's stuck into holders. So we're in the render function now. We start our rendering, and here's our render tick. And in that, you see our brightness function, our oscillation is ticking away here. That goes into a sign function, which I've taken the absolute value of, because I don't want that brightness to go negative. It's just going from 0 to 1, uh, 0 to 1. So, And that's all there is to it. And it's, because that is part of the display object, it just automatically changed this to the brightness. Isn't that pretty cool? Pretty easy to make a sun. We're actually going to show you a blender city here in a few posts coming up, where the sun rises and sets. And everything's thrown into a container, and I rotate that container based upon the mouse X and Y positions. And that's all there is to it. And once again, the demo. There you have it. You now have brightness. Isn't that wonderful? Well, this is Mike Live from Northern Kentucky University. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.